one of the coolest 86s I've ever seen. In this episode, we're gonna see what it's like when you've got a perfectly done turbo 86. Oh. oh shit! <laughs> All right, guys, today I'm here with Sean, who's the owner of this beautiful 86. Hey, Sean, how you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. What are we looking at here, man? This is so cool. What year model is this? It is a 2013. This is my pride and joy. It's, I've owned the car for a year. I've only driven it for about, collectively, for about four months itself. Only um, four months? Four months only. Oh, um, nice. The rest of the time, the car's off the road. It's in the mechanic shop. We're building the turbocharger on it as well, custom kit on it. And then yep. on top of that, we also decided to go for the front and rear bumper as well with the aftermarket. Yep. Um, did so wait over four months for it. You waited four months for the whole body kit to get done or? Yeah, for the front bumper to just be shipped to Australia. Um, and it probably took another two weeks with um, putting it onto the body with custom moldings and everything as well. That's cool, um, man. I love this wood, bro. So it is a Verus version two bonnet. Um, it is a full carbon bonnet. The bonnet is wraps. Um, so we have exposed the carbon bits on here as well. Um, and it also is matched with your robot craftsman bumper, which is which has been custom molded to fit the body of a narrow body. Yeah. Um, it is designed for a wide body application, this case here. What do you mean by wide body with the wide body Verus so, body kit? So, yes, yeah, so the Robot Craftsman bumper is, or the Robot Craftsman kit is actually a whole complete wide body kit itself. Because Makai is actually a narrow body at the moment, we've actually had to mold and cut the bumper to make it fit into the narrow body application here. Right. Um, and yeah, my panel bed has done that by J&D Customs. Um, all the work done by him. Wow, it seems like a lot of work, man. Yeah, a lot of hours behind it. Um, it's not just a straight cut, bog it up again. It is more applying it, test fitting it. Yeah, taking times. it off trial and error. Yeah, trial and error, and then probably took about nearly a whole day to get everything perfect lined Far up. Out. Let's move on to the wheels, man. I can see a big brake kit. Um, so the brakes, they're definitely upgraded brakes from Willwood four pot brakes as well. Um, I believe they're called the Dynalite series. With all the with all the modifications to the car, you do need the power to stop as well. So I yeah. have opted in to go for the four pot system here. Um, definitely it is a very aggressive braking system so it, it works in my application when I need yep. it to. And it is accompanied by the work D9R wheels. Yeah, in, um, beautiful uh, wheels, man. Amazing wheels. This wing fender here, I see that on a lot of 86s. Where does that come from? Um, so I believe that I got these from... Bro, honestly, I don't know. Don't know? <laughs> yeah, all good. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems very popular, man. Like, every 86 that's been modified cosmetically, yeah. I see has that piece on there. That's the thing. A lot of people opt for these ones. I have opted to go for a carbon look with the Cybern 12mm um, extra guards. Yeah. Um, so these guards are also carbon fibre as well. We've opted in to show the carbon aspect here Wait, as so well. is that whole fender aftermarket? Absolutely. It is oh, a complete aftermarket okay, carbon cool. fender. And I noticed that even back here, there's a, a cooling duct behind the wheel wheel. You can see the whole chassis underneath because you guys took off the lining, hey? Yeah, so because it is running a bigger guard size as well, yep. um, we did have to take the lining off from it. Yeah. Um, the, the only downside is that it does flick rocks into the engine bay. It does make it a little oh. more dirtier. Because we're also running bigger brakes and the more power as well, uh, we're anticipating to take them to more track days. We did actually opt to take the lining out as well. So yep. it actually does get a lot more cooling going into oh. the brake itself. And it's a bit lighter as well. It'll save a few extra kilos. Yeah. And you can see the functional vents back there. I love seeing functional vents on a car, man. And those skirts, definitely aftermarket skirts, hey? Those skirts, absolutely. They look so good, man. The carbon fiber side skirts underneath it as well. That yeah. Looks hectic. Um, also does give the car a much more aggressive look by having it lower. Let's move on to the back of the car. And this boot, man, a lot of people, I, I love the duckbill spoiler, but most people that you see that do it, it's an add-on. Absolutely. This thing is freaking smooth, man. What did you do there? Yeah, How'd look, you get it? With my build, and I built the car, um, ultimately, I didn't want to have anything sticky taped on or just yeah. had it there, bolted on. I'd rather, rather do everything, spend a little bit extra, get it molded. So yep. it is your leg sport duck lip spoiler, molded on. We've actually replicated the leg sport boot. So it is a custom custom boot that you can't actually find off the shelf. Really? Um, oh, at any retailer. Okay. And what about this diffuser, man? That's pretty epic. Diffuser, that's the, I believe the various Air Rising 2 diffuser. Carbon, I've opted for the carbon option as well. It is also accompanied by the NVIDIA system, so it tucks in nice and well, it doesn't yep. stick out. And Is it the NVIDIA N1 it system? It is the N1 system, absolutely. Yep. So it does have a deeper note to it at the low end, yeah. um, a high note at the high end. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
And then you can't miss the plates. Aggravate, the aggravate, man. Where does that come from? Aggravate. Well, it is It is definitely a long story. Were you aggravating them with the, uh, the, the so. obnoxious Abs NVIDIA exhaust? <laughs> look, look, definitely not the exhaust at the time, though the car was there and was involved. But I won't go into too much detail of that. It, okay, it is sure. a long story with it. But sure. When I first saw it, it took me a minute to work out like, oh, aggravate, oh, that's what it is. Oh, I forgot to ask earlier, but this blue, what do you call the blue? Well, it is a, it is a custom blue that we have opted for. So a lot of people call it sky blue, Tiffany blue, yeah. or baby blue. Is it a wrap or is it a, a paint? The bumpers yeah. are painted, so both the bumpers are painted and the rest of the car is wrapped. We do have plans to actually paint the whole car with an open door respray. Yeah. So back to metal. So the whole um, thing, this same colour? Absolutely the same colour. Um, yeah, I'd be seat. disappointed if you didn't, man. <laughs> you know what, a lot of people have told me that and look, the colour is actually what I'm set on. And look, I just keep coming back the same colour but just because you don't see a lot of people with this colour. No, not um, at all. Alright, let's have a look in the engine bay, man. Let's have a look. Straight away. Oh, mate, you've got no filter, eh? So, Defect central, bro. Defect central, <laughs> absolutely. But you know what? Knock on wood at the moment, I haven't been... Pulled over. Pulled over by cops at the moment, so it's a bit of counting my days at yeah, the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I do have a pod filter for it. I have opted for the aeroflow option. Um, yep. It is more for when I go to car shows or when I'm doing production with the cars. Yeah. I'll put that there. Um, but apart from that, it, it is a custom turbo kit. I've gone for the intercooler piping to be custom with it. It also is running on E85 as well with big injectors. Flex tune or just E85? No flex, it is just E85 straight. Um, I love the 85 aspect of it. It does cost a lot of times to the fuel station at the end of the day. Yeah. Though um, I've, I don't complain. I love the car, I love driving it. So what have you done to the engine bay, man? So as we can see, it does have a GTX 3076 uh, turbo kit. It was originally a SME kit, um, though we have stepped away from it. And we have also gone for a custom setup. So the turbo is not part of the SME kit, so I've gone for a custom GTX turbo said. The only thing I'm running is the SME headers. Um, equal length headers there. And on top of that, because I'm also running a turbo, more power from the car as well, yeah. I have opted in to go for an all cool at the end, at the end as well with the emission yep. motor thermostatic. Yeah, and is that made for the for the car? Absolutely. So what I've done, because my intercooler is a custom intercooler as well, didn't yeah. come with any kits. So I have actually had to make my own custom man for it as well. So it is sitting in front of the intercooler kit with cups custom bolt-ons as well. Yeah. Um, and it fits perfectly with the diagonal setting of the intercooler. It is a Mishimoto upgraded radiator with also a upgraded high pressure reservoir as well. So yep. more liquid on it. Um, it actually does make a lot of difference to the cooling temperatures of the car. Nice. And is this stock block? Haven't opened, haven't had any issues with it so far? No, nah, absolutely not. It is pushing 290 kilowatts. 290? 290, what? that's on tuned. A, on, on a stock 2 litre? Yeah, and that is tuned by PVS. Um, Holy shit. So it is on a stock block at the moment. 290, wow. And is that running completely reliable? Um, Absolutely. N haven't skipped any heartbeats at the moment. Knock on wood for that. Um, Though it's not a car that I just sit in the car and just like crash every single day. It is, on my, it is my daily, so I do yeah. take good care of it. We are actually in the works of a mechanic at the moment who's sponsored my car yep. um, to actually take the engine out, do a closed deck build on it, forge internals and just push more power through the car. Though no issues with that at the moment, it is, it is pretty reliable I'd say. So what have you done to get it to 290? Because stock, these things at the wheels is like figure 110. Yeah. It makes peanuts. My car, same engine, Stock from the factory, less than 200 kilowatts. It's got an upgraded in-tank fuel pump, I believe it's 370 um, litres fuel pump. And on yep. top of that, it's running at 1050 injectors by ID, 85 compatible. So then, is that the whole fuel system upgraded? Whole fuel system upgraded, fuel lines yep. uh, from tank up to engine upgraded as well. Holy uh, shit, man. And then, yeah, the turbo is also another step up. So I'm yep. also upgraded to go for a bigger turbo with it as well to push more power through it. And it is a rear wheel drive. And look, when the car does hit boost, the rear wheels actually do kick out. And I've actually opted in to go for semi-slicks. At um, the back. R triple eight R wheels at the yep. back. And that makes a big difference, but it still brakes traction with the semi-slicks. Um, and I've noticed, man, you've got some coilovers. Absolutely. BC racing. So some BC gold coilovers as well. Nice and comfortable with my daily ride. I have maxed the stiffness out in it just because of the front bumper. Um, oh, I like to stop it from compressing. Yeah, stop from compressing. Right. So though it's nothing that actually causes an issue to me. It's actually nice and comfortable still. Car handles well. It's nice and stiff. Um, yeah. Feels like it's a go kart, like everyone says. If you don't mind. So when you okay. first bought it. Yeah. from the guy off Facebook Marketplace, how much did it cost? So you? with the turbo kit, got the car, I did pay about 27,000 on it. Oh wow. So relatively cheap as on, yeah. did negotiate. So 27K with this, and then all of the mods that you put on it, if you don't mind, at the moment, how much is it at costing At the moment, you? it has cost me above, let's say about 25, 30 grand. Extra. Extra. So Absolutely. about in the mid 50s to get this In the mid 50s, yeah. So why, uh, this begs the question, 
why would you get... Oh, we'll just wait for this guy. Oh. So that begs the question, man. Why would you buy a, essentially a Subaru with a naturally aspirated engine and a turbo put on afterwards? Yeah. Two-wheel drive rather than getting something like an SCI or a Rexy yeah. that has low compression engine, you know, factory turbo system and all-wheel drive? It's a good question. Um, look, with all my cars, I've always wanted to build it something more different, more unique from the market. Yeah. Um, now the thing is, uh, the 86 market is a pretty big and wide market itself. Um, so much aftermarket support, man. Absolutely. And look, I actually never intended on getting an 86 at all, but I looked at the 86 a little bit more. I started looking to the market. I was like, I already had my vision builder really planned out in my head. Yeah, um, okay. So I bought the car and literally, as soon as you bought the car, I drove for about probably a month or less. Straight to a mechanic shop, we ripped the car apart. The car was literally sitting in pieces, no body panels on it whatsoever. Um, <laughs> front to back, went all out of it and um, yeah, bought out this. And look, it did take about <clears throat> nearly six, six to eight months to build it. It is probably the best six to eight months I've actually waited. I'm guessing if you were to go back, you'd make the exact same decision. Absolutely, probably wouldn't make any different. Probably build it up to the same spec, nice and neat, make it unique. Have you driven a stock 86 or BRZ? I actually haven't. No, no why? Absolutely not. Dude, you need to get behind the wheel of one, man, because they're absolute nuggets. And this yeah. thing having more than double the power, dude, you should get into a stock absolutely. 86, man. So your first experience of being in an 86? Is literally a boosted one. Wow. From okay. the day I got it. <laughs> um, Maybe we'll go for a drive. Absolutely, and let's go. yeah, we'll get some shots, drive lights, and see what you think and what we think on the inside. Yeah, done. Sounds yeah, like cool. a plan. Let's go. All right, let's go. Go for a drive. Oh, dude, it's so loud, man. <laughs> dude, that sounds so good. Yeah, it's bro. It, it, it gets me going, man. Oh, far out, man. Oh, dude, the turbo spool sounds hectic as well, yeah, man. Yeah, the T51R was oh, done recently, so... Try this in here. Oh, <laughs> dude! <laughs> Oh, that sounds, it, it feels so good, man. It sticks as well. With these tires that I put yeah. recently on them, it oh, definitely... Far out. It, it's so smooth. Like, I like what you've done with the coilovers. It, you yeah. know, it's not super harsh. Even though you said it's on the harshest setting, it's still, you know, relatively comfortable. And it's it is. quite acceptable. Oh, man. And it's, oh, it feels smooth. That's the thing with I like these BC coilovers as well. The good thing with the BCs are, uh, even though this is in the stiffest setting, like it still feels relatively comfortable Acceptable. as well. While I work in the city, yeah. even from that, like it's nice roads as well. Um, when I'm cruising through and when you get to the city or whatever, you yeah. get the bumpy roads and you still feel yep. the bump, but it's not harsh It's at compliant. All. Yeah. Oh, let's go inside. Oh, you've got some mad gauges, man. Have a look on the inside. The yeah. outside complements the inside. Relatively, it is all stock, though you can see it does have your gauges, your defi gauges, and yeah. their water temp, oil temp, oil pressure as well. And it is also accompanied by my aftermarket Piney head system. Yeah, because I've, I've been in a few of these, and the stock head unit is trash. Absolutely. Rubbish. Initially, when I got the head unit, um, it did have the stock speakers on it. The stock speakers only stayed in the car with the head unit for probably less than 24 hours. Um, <laughs> after that, when down to the radio shop and actually told him what was after. Ended up going for an amp, sub, head unit. Um, so the full system. With it. And full system, tweeters yeah. with it as well. Um, nice. With upgraded wiring to the car. But the inside's nice, man. You kept it nice and clean with the addition of these gauges, which are, you know, really cool. But everything else, nice, clean. And I think when this came out, it was nothing groundbreaking, but it was nice and ergonomic. It's so comfortable in here. The seating position is perfect as well. I Absolutely. love the seating position. I do have more plans for the interior coming through shortly. The seats, everyone's asked me. I'm definitely going to keep these seats just because I can't see any of the seats I would go for. There are a pair of yeah. Recaros that I have seen with the heated seat option. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and like I can't believe that this thing's got heated seats because this thing is a lot older than my car, the Rexy. And my, my Rexy is a premium and it doesn't have heated seats. Yeah, no. So annoying. <laughs> That's yeah, so cool, go. man. Two. It sounds so good. I can't get over that turbo sound, dude. Yeah, that, look, that's probably literally that sound. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted it, and I've just found the right person who can do, do the T51R mod. <laughs>
All right, guys. Thanks, Sean, for showing around your All car. Good. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Maybe we'll see you next time when you get the car when built the again. Engine built, wide body, everything on it. Keep you updated. Yeah, sounds sick. Guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the episode, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and bell icon. Thanks so much for your support. Thanks, Sean, for coming onto the channel. No worries, not an issue, guys. We'll see Sean definitely in the future. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode.